John Lennon reads from A Spaniard in the Works, a collection of absurd poems and short stories. As you all know, Harris Wilsard won the general election with a very small Marjorie over the torches, thus putting the labouring party back into Powell after a large abscess. This he could not have done without span the barking of the trade onions, heady by Frank Cunnings, who now has a safe seat in non-eating, thank you, and Frank, only 62, bowels who hasn't. Sir Alec, doubtless whom, was, quote, bitterly disappointed, but managed to keep smirking on his 500,000-acre estate in Scotland with a bit of fishing and that. And that was the second lesson, according to John Lennon. Once again, he's put on his writer's hat to follow up the success of his first book in his own right with another epic of inconsequence, A Spaniard in the Works, a little work full of pieces of political wisdom, such as you've just heard, and moving poems like The Wumberlog or The Magic Dog. Whilst all the tower was sleepy, crept a little boy from bed to feign the wondrous people what lived when they were dead. He packed a little voucher for his dinner neath a tree, for humps a tiny dwarf or two would share a bite with me. For champ I'll see the wumberlog, the highly feathered crow, the laughing, leaping Harris Tweed and good old Uncle Joe. He packed the very trunk case, cleaned sockers for a week, his book and Denzel for his notes, then out the windy creep. He met him friendly magic dog, all black and curlew too. What flew him fast in second class to do what he must do. Mr. Lennon, your first book was a bestseller, and I shouldn't think there's any doubt that this one's going to be too. Do you think that you'd be published uh, where you're not a Beatle? I could probably get published, but, you know, I wouldn't sell as many. I mean, they publish a lot of rubbish anyway, but uh, I wouldn't sell. Do you think you've got a built-in advantage in being a Beatle? I mean, are you glad about this, or would you rather have uh, earned a reputation as a writer in your own right? No, I never thought of it. If I hadn't been a Beatle, I just wouldn't have thought of having the stuff published, because I would have been crawling around broke and just writing it and throwing it away. Might have been a Beat poet. How did it come about that you weren't a Beat poet and that your first book was published? Well, some American who shall remain nameless was called Michael Brown. He st I showed him the stuff, and he took it to the publisher, and they published it, that was it. Did you ever think of publishing it under a pseudonym, not as John Lennon? I thought of that, but uh, <coughs> what's the use there? Because he took it to the publisher first without telling them who it was, just to see if they would have published it. So that answers your first question as well. It does indeed, yeah. Living in, you know, the butterfly world of pop as a Beatle, do you find that this undermines people's serious acceptance of you as a writer? Uh, it does, but I don't really, I didn't really expect them to take me seriously, so, I, you know, there's nothing to say about that. They do take it more seriously than I thought, so that's good enough for me. Indeed, they do. I mean, the first book was uh, reviewed in the Posh Sunders, and on the other side of the fence, your music's uh, recorded by people like Ella Fitzgerald. Now, this is serious recognition in both areas. Which, which do you find more satisfying? Well, uh, the book, really, because... It means more to other people that Ella Fitzgerald recorded one of our tunes than it does to us, because the tune is still something that Paul and I have written. So we still have the same faith in it. It just gives other people more faith in the tune. This book's very similar to the first in being bits and pieces of poems and bits of prose. Do you think you'd ever want to write anything longer, a novel, for example? Well, I tried right. The longest thing I've written is in this book. It's one about Sherlock Holmes. And it seemed like a novel to me, but it turned out to be six pages. But I couldn't... I don't think I could... I couldn't do it, you know, I'd get fed up and I didn't know who was... I brought so many characters in, I forgot who they were, you know. This happens to other writers, too. Oh, other writers, good. <laughs> the pop business is a young man's world. It seems to have an ever-increasingly young audience. Do you think that perhaps uh, writing a book like this and writing at all perhaps might be an unconscious attempt to win recognition in the adult world? No, because I started all this writing long before I was a pop artist, or even a Beatle, or before I had a guitar. So it's nothing to do with that. The guitars came second. Second. And which comes first? Well, now the guitars come first, because this is still a hobby, which it always has been. Mm. Are you going on doing it, are you? I'll go on doing it. I mean, have it. you written anything else? Is there anything else coming after this, a third uh, uh, one in the series? Well, it, I don't get much time. If I had more time, I'd probably write more. The publisher rang up and said, have you written... Have you written anything yet? I said, no, I've been writing songs because I can't do both at once. You know, I've got to concentrate on the book or the songs. So I haven't written anything since this. We'll look for it. Nevertheless, John, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.